I trust you for utterance and for the anointing. That someone under the influence of my voice right now will have a life-changing encounter with your word, even in these few minutes. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I am so excited to be a part of this productive innovation in a time like this. A virtual quiffy convention. Wow. I must first salute our ever-productive, progressive, creative, exemplary matriarch, Archbishop Margaret Benson Idahosa. This is her birthday season, and I say, many happy returns, Mom, and may all the great things stored in you continue to find expression as we, your seed, continue to call you blessed in this land of the living. Amen. Amen. And of course, the able leadership of Quiffy, the Christian Women Fellowship International, may God bless you all tremendously. I am so grateful and honored to be a member of this amazing family of God. Thank you, Mama Julie and the whole crew. And a shout out to everyone out there. Quiffy women, home and abroad, I celebrate you all. Amen. Focus on Christ for productivity. That is our theme this year. Focus on Christ for productivity. And like I began to say a few minutes ago, I am just so glad that we are still having a convention this year against all odds. And we are even having a blast. Do I have a witness in the house? This, for me, is a practical example of productivity. Among other definitions, I looked it up in the dictionary. Productivity means doing something great, achieving a lot, yielding positive results, having benefits, making profits, making progress, being constructive, creative, formative, etc., etc., etc. So, in a time like this, that the devil obviously means for evil, the good news is that we can focus on Christ and deliberately turn situations around for good. I am saying, even now, we can be productive. Hallelujah. I'll say that one more time. Even now, we can be productive. I'm sure you know there is nothing good or new about the devil and all his agenda. There never is. It's the same old thing, the same old devil. Whether he uses corona or anything else, whether it is or he is against an individual in your business, in your marriage, in your career or whatever, or whether he is against a people, a nation, or even the whole world like he is doing in this pandemic. The Bible says in John chapter 10, verse number 10, the devil has only one mission. He has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But when we partner with Christ, I'm talking about when we focus on him, even then, in the very presence of our enemy and all his shenanigans, we can enjoy life in its abundance. Oh, hallelujah. That's what that verse promises us. He has come that we may have life in its abundance. Hear me loud and clear. We serve a God who can still give his children a Goshen in the very heart of Egypt. 
The Bible says that while Egypt was experiencing darkness, Goshen was enjoying brightness. Oh, hallelujah. So, even now, while many are saying there is a casting down, you and I can testify that there is a lifting up. Do I have a witness in this house? I prophesy a lifting to you wherever you are right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen to me. It is my calculated opinion that if human beings are smart enough to create a first class or a business class in the same aircraft that has economy, economy class. And if you have traveled in those two classes before, like I have, you will understand better what I'm trying to say. Time won't permit for details. But trust me, those are two extremely different experiences in the same environment. In the same aircraft where somebody is eating jollof rice, they are giving somebody else puff puff at the back. I might dial in somebody's number. But the truth is that Namoni Kilam. Oh, Ragaze Babo Sheki. But my point is, if human beings are smart enough to do that, what makes you think that the Almighty God, the creator of the universe, the king of all kings the god of signs and wonders what makes you think that that kind of a god cannot give his own children for whom he paid the highest price possible what makes you think how dare you imagine that he cannot give his own children a first class experience in the midst of this present mess what makes you think that quiffy woman Focus on Christ. And what the devil meant to be a tragedy will become your strategy for productivity. So, true, presently, life may seem to be giving us lemons worldwide. But child of God, I challenge you to become creative, resourceful, Learn to improvise, be productive, and turn those same bitter lemons into sweet lemonade. Don't join the world. Don't join the unbelievers and even some believers to sing the song of all the negative things this period represents. Slow business, poor education, low income, no cash, no traveling, lockdown and lock up, uncertainties, fear of the unknown, and even death. That's the picture this period paints. Well, in this same period, in this same time, Genesis chapter 1, verse number 28 remains a sure command. The A part of Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 says, Then God blessed them. I ask you this day, are we still the blessed of God? Ah, has Corona changed our status? Aha! And God said to them, I ask you again, does God still have something to say? Is he still speaking even now or not? I need a witness. Is God still talking to somebody even now? He said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion. And it goes on to say a number of things. Ladies and gentlemen, I make bold to declare Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 is still an instruction today, not a suggestion. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And I hope the women know. Do I have women listening to me? I hope the women know that multiply, replenish, and fill the earth in that verse is not just talking about baby making. It's not just talking about childbearing. So don't use all this lockdown period 
to get pregnant and feel everywhere, litter everywhere with babies. That's not the assignment. At least that's not the only assignment. That verse goes on to say, subdue. Have dominion. Subjugate. Rule. Take charge. Take control. In simple English, it is saying, be optimally productive. Oh, hallelujah. And I say, considering that we were made in the image and likeness of the God who in the whole of Genesis chapter 1 gave us an excellent example of creativity and productivity, even now, you and I can produce something out of the seeming nothingness and the emptiness and the bleakness all around us presently. Genesis 1.27 says we were created in the image and likeness of God. Nothing is big enough to make a failure out of us because there is no failure in the God we resemble. Somebody hearing me? No. It's not in our DNA. Quiffy woman, it is not in our DNA. Time will not permit me to give the many personal examples of things I didn't know I could do before this pandemic. But because I chose, listen to this, I chose to focus on Christ and not on the crisis. Even me, moi. Today, I have testimonies, not a few. For me, this tragedy is fast becoming a strategy. I tell you, by the time this whole corona thing is over, I have a feeling that you and I will be able to look at one another and testify. I have a feeling that we have a reason to look at myself and ask, is me be this? Ah, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you agree with me that many things that if they had told us we could do without or live without or survive without, if by January they had told us we could do without some of those things, we would not have believed. We would have disagreed. Well, the last six to seven months have proved to us beyond every reasonable and unreasonable doubt that everything else can fail. Only Christ remains strong and sure, the solid rock on which we stand. No wonder Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 in the New King James Version says, and I read, looking unto Jesus, talking about focusing on Christ, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher, the A and the Z of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the coro- sorry the cross. Uh-huh. Am I dialing somebody's number? Despising the shame and now has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You, did you see that? He endured the, coro- the cross. So, even Jesus encountered tough times and rough times. That's what that verse shows me. Even Jesus. So, don't be deceived. There's nothing new about this corona business and all it represents. It's just another tough and rough time. Am I communicating? It's just another tough time. It's just another rough time. Friends, Jesus remains our best example. So, focus on him. If Jesus, against all odds, the Bible says he went from Gethsemane in John chapter 17 to Gabbatha in John chapter 19 verse 13 and from there to Golgotha in John chapter 19 verses 17 and 18 and then eventually, consequently, to the grave in John chapter 19 Verses 41 and 42. Did you see that trend from Gethsemane to Gabbatha? And not that, this was going worse. To Golgotha to the grave. And eventually, ladies and gentlemen, today, that same Jesus, after all that ordeal, he seated in glory, having fulfilled purpose because 
because he remained focused and productive despite all the odds against him. All his negative G's, uh, the Golgotha, the Gethsemane, the Gabbatha, the grave. Today we are celebrating a positive G. He is in glory because he remained focused and productive. If that is the case for Jesus, then let me sign out right now by simply saying, go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. Quiffy woman, go and do likewise. God bless you. Help me welcome Papa, my husband, Bishop Fredado, as he speaks a blessing on Quiffy and indeed every woman out there. God bless you. Glory to God. Thank you so much. God's woman, a lovely wife of very good preaching. I found out that the one who is my mother is actually also my father, my encourager. And her name is Archbishop Margaret Idahosa. I always wanted to go to a Quiffy conference. I always told my wife, one day I will follow you for Quiffy conference. Well, here am I. God has answered my prayers so that you like it or not. I'm in Quiffy conference. So all the Quiffy ladies in the house joining in, I beg, thank God for me. I don't come. I don't join you now. Shall we pray? Father, thank you. We thank God for the gift and the vision of Quiffy. At the time of famine, you are still God. At the time of plenty, you are still God. I'm asking you to show your grace and your power over to the lives of your people and bring them joy where there was pain. You bring springs in the desert. You, you cause rocks to bring out water. So I pray for all of your children. Listen to the sound of my voice. As this conference continues and we hear all the speakers and great things happening. I declare over you from my heart. That the days ahead. Will be far better for you. Than the days gone by. I count it done. In the name that's above every other name. That wonderful name of Jesus. Amen and amen, and God bless you.